All right, we're on step number three of our four different software parts. Stitch your photos into 360 panorama with PT GUI or free version plugin. Lecture number 10. All right, first of all, we have our photos that we're going to bring into PT GUI. That's the name of our stitching software. We just pulled out 10 photos from batch merge and there's JPEG version and HDR version. We want the JPEG version. Then we put in our lens info which is 8 millimeters, a crop of 1.5. Once you get them in there you flip them 90 degrees and you just hit align. Honestly the PT GUI software is gonna stitch them into a big panel. There's not much work after this. Then you have three main controls yaw, pitch, and roll. Yaw is shifting the image left and right along the horizon. Pitch is panning the image up or down like you're nodding your head yes. And then roll is tilting your head sideways uh, sort of like y if you were a jet pilot and you were rolling to the left and rolling to the right. These are the camera movements that we have while we uh, adjust our panel. Usually I put the center I put the sun at the center and try to focus every image around some sort of, um, you know, center light source. Once you do that, we're going to do file save. Always a very safe version one, version two. And then we start looking at our JPEGs. We're going to replace every JPEG with an HDR image. So you just go to the source page and you say replace, replace, replace. This can be done as a batch in text. But there it is. Here I'm looking at another tab. This is where all the control points are. These points get set automatically by PT GUI. If it makes a mistake, sometimes you have to manually add more points. That can be a hassle, but it's not too bad. And at the end, we output the thing. We tell it we're doing true HDR. We're going to optimize the light levels and we're going to do our settings to see how large of a file we want. If we tell it a uh, maximum file size, it'll give us a big number. Uh, we could round it down to a nice even number. I usually do 7,000, 7,100, and, uh, and tell it we only really want to output one HDR image. So that takes a little while to calculate. Could take longer if you don't have a good GPU on your laptop. In my case, it takes about one minute on a, a decent Asus laptop. Next, when it outputs the 7K panoramic, we're going to view the thing and tone map it using Photomatix again. So because it's HDR, people can't really look at it or enjoy it, and it's kind of ugly, until you tone map it. So Photomatix is very good at this. You say tone map, and on the right hand side you get a whole bunch of creative looking um, you know color schemes it's like a fast dirty comp so they have sort of calm realistic ones and then they get more obnoxious with um, you know this is the HDR look that you'll always see on the internet I usually prefer to do something that's more like a camera more realistic and uh, then you can output a JPEG from here to post on the internet or whatnot or you have your original HDR, which I'm always using inside of Maya for my image-based lighting or whatnot. But this is the place where you can make a very beautiful panoramic. This example here is with a different camera setup. This is with my Sony full-frame mirrorless Alpha 7. Yeah, I do four shots around, 90 degrees each, one shot up and one shot down. So I can do the same panorama in six images. So I've got my six HDRs and my six JPEGs. The process really is the same. It's just my lens camera combo is different. So I open up my six JPEGs right into PT GUI. Because it's a full frame, I say eight millimeter lens and my crop factor is now one instead of 1.5. The circular, the full frame gives me this uh, black edges. So I have to crop in a little bit. PT GUI allows you to crop in for the circular lens. This always happens when you have a full frame sensor 
and a 8 millimeter lens. So once you've set that crop, you can then say align images. The one crop applied to all six, and then PT GUI finds all the control points and puts together our six images to once again give us 360 degrees. Notice the tripod is a little messier than before because we didn't have two images at the bottom. Once again, I bring that thing into Photomatrix, and notice on the left-hand side there, there's a little button I clicked that says 360 seam or 360 image. That makes sure that you don't have a seam on your edges. Once you do that, you can output a nice, beautiful, tone-mapped JPEG. And let's go ahead and look at that JPEG inside of a, uh, a 360 viewer. This is always fun. Now that we have just fixed the seam in Photomatrix, let me show you why you would have to do that. Let's view our pano not flat, but in a 360 video player. This is a free utility called Color Eyes, K-O-L-O-R. You just drag your pano onto this utility. This could be a, a VR 360 movie as well. And it allows you to tumble around the image as though it's on a sphere. So let's make it full screen. And then we can fly around the image. We can look down and see our nodal ninja there. We can look up and see the top of the screen. This panoramic is the inside of a ship, a Royal Caribbean ship called Anthem of the Seas. Uh, along with seeing it as a sphere, you can map it as tiny planet, which is also very cool. Whenever you see those tiny planet things with the big sky, that's how they do that. It's just an inverted mapping of a panoramic image, which is seamless, onto different shapes. All right, then. Next, how do we clean it up? And what do we want to clean? We want to clean up this, uh, this tripod. That thing is worthless. So let's move on to our next step. Hold on. Before we jump to cleanup, let's look at the free shareware alternative, Huggin, Panorama Stitching Software. Go to the web and find the stuff. It's free and it works great. The process is almost exactly the same. Find your 10 photos, put in your focal length, 8 millimeters, 1.5, and then create control points. After it makes initial points, I go to the quick preview, and I see it has done an alignment. It's not quite right, though. I see the tripod. I see everything there. I can do a move drag. I grab the tripod, drag it to the bottom and the center, and there it is. It all comes together. It just needs a little help placing it on the sphere. And once again, um, there's a whole bunch of different types of projections that are interesting. But we're always doing equi-rectangular. When that's done, you can then do the stitcher, output, optimal size, 6,700, and it can also do HDR. So Huggin can be your free solution rather than PT GUI. Try that out.